Hi there, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to load external data into Excel using the Python Excel add-in Pixel. Uh, and we'll see that it's really, really easy to download external data. I'm going to be downloading from Yahoo Finance uh, and then creating candlestick charts. Uh, and you can do all this kind of stuff using Pixel. The reason I thought I'd make this video was because I've seen people online saying with Microsoft's new Python in Excel feature, how it's impossible to load external data because it's all sandboxed and running in the cloud and this kind of stuff. And so I wanted to show you how in Pixel, the same is not true. With Pixel, your code's running locally, it can access you know, all the same resources you can normally. Uh, and I've also seen videos where people are showing kind of workarounds, uh, pulling data into Power Query and then sending that off to Python in the cloud. Uh, and I just want to show you how kind of all of that complexity just isn't necessary with, with Pixel, and the result is a much better experience. So what I'm going to do is dig into a Jupyter Notebook running in Excel to show you a few little things. One thing I would say is with Pixel, all of your Python code lives outside of Excel. So although I'm using Jupyter in Excel here, usually if I was building like an actual project, I'd be working in VS Code and I'd be saving my code to GitHub, all this kind of stuff. And I could then very easily deploy that to other Excel users by uh, putting that into a package, which I can then distribute to everyone. But for this demo, I'm just going to be you know, throwing some stuff around in uh, in Jupyter. So this is a, a nice way to do this. So to begin with, what I'm doing here is importing this Y Finance package. So this package is a third party package that uh, pulls data from Yahoo Finance. And it makes it very, very easy for just picking up little bits of, of test data like this. So here, all I'm doing is setting this ticker variable to Microsoft and then saying uh, Yahoo Finance dot download. And I'm getting the maximum data I can get in hourly intervals, reading into a data frame, and then I'll just show you the, the first few rows with DFHead. So there we can see, you know, I've got some data coming in. I'm just showing the first bit here. Uh, but what I want to do is clean this data up a little bit. I want to drop this row here in the in the index. I just want a data frame simply indexed by, by these things. Uh, so I'd do that, first of all, by, by swapping the column levels, so swapping this row here with this row here, uh, and then just selecting this row. So if I do that and just move this head thing, you'll see what that looks like. So now I've got it it's slightly cleaner. It's going to be easier for me to work with in the next step. Uh, and I could also do df describe so we can see it's not that much data. It's only three and a half thousand rows. Now what I want to do is actually plot that data as a candlestick chart. And I'm going to use Plotly for this. And the reason for that is that Plotly has like really nice candlestick support. You can see here it's, it's very, very simple. All I'm doing is calling uh, go.figure to create the, the Plotly figure and then using this candlestick uh, thing here, giving it the open, high, low, close, all of this stuff. And what that will do when I run this is very easily give me a nice uh, candlestick chart here. One thing I don't like about the default Plotly thing is the layout, so I just have this bit here to update the layout to reduce those margins slightly. So so far, all I've done is some you know some some basic Python code. It just happens to be in a cell in a in a panel in Excel. So you know so far so what. But now I want to show you is how I would get this, turn this into functions that any old Excel user, regardless of whether they know Python or not, can can very easily use. To do that. What I do is import the uh, Excel Funk Decorator from Pixel, and all these other imports are the same as above. And I'm first of all going to have a uh, function here, which is going to do exactly the same as we saw above. So just copying and pasting this stuff into a function, which I've called load history. It takes three arguments, a ticker, a period, an interval, downloads the data, does that thing with the columns, and then returns the, the data frame. So let's see what that looks like now. Uh, so let's create some things in Excel here. Period interval. I need to actually run this cell as well. So run that. Again, this is what I'd usually do in, uh, in Visual Studio in, in a way that I can then distribute to other people. But uh, for simplicity, I'm just doing it here. And we'll get Apple now uh, and say period max and interval uh, one hour. And if I call load history, and give it these things here. So you see, you know, this you could very easily give this function to a non Python Excel user and they'd be very happy running this. And what this has returned here, this data frame at 35, uh, is a handle to the actual data frame object. 
in uh, back in Jupyter, I can let me make some space. Uh, I could do Excel get with this cell selected, and that gets me this data frame back into Python. But kind of all you need to understand here is that this is a handle to the underlying data frame. And I can write other functions that take that handle as a data frame and then do other stuff. And that's exactly what the next function does. Uh, so here I've got the code that I had here, exactly the same code, but wrapped in a function with my Excel func decorator calling plot candlestick, uh, passing all through here. And then I'm calling plot fig, where plot is a special pixel function, which takes this plotly figure and shows it in Excel. So let's see what that looks like if I run plot candlestick and I just pass in this data frame and then it's given me the same chart that I had here, but in Excel. So let me just resize this a little bit and pop out of design mode. And now what I've got is exactly that same plotly chart in Excel, interactive, so I can do kind of all the things that you would normally do in a plotly chart but as a chart in Excel, which is kind of nice. We can also do things, because these are just functions in Excel, uh, I could change this to get the another ticker, uh, or you know whatever I want, and I can change these intervals, so I could say get me the one minute interval, uh, or hourly interval, or daily interval, uh, and I could say give me just the last two years, this kind of stuff. So I can, you know, uh, this is a properly interactive chart where I can interact with it, but also I can change all the inputs to it. One thing that's nice about doing it this way as well is that I can just copy and paste this whole lot if I wanted a second chart. Uh, let's uh, let's just put this, actually let's resize this slightly, move it up here, and then put this here, get another chart, resize that and put that there. So now I've got two functions and two charts, and I can do comparisons between things. Uh, and yeah, and it's just kind of uh, nice and easy. You saw how I'm loading data directly from, uh, from Yahoo directly in Excel, uh, and then transformed into some Python functions, which are then very easy for, for a non-Python user to uh, to use. Now, uh, before I finish, I want to show you very quickly how you can do the same thing, or kind of the same thing, using Microsoft's Python in Excel. Um, the first thing to note, though, is with Microsoft's Python in Excel, we can't use the Y Finance module uh, because we can't access internet resources. So what we have to do uh, is, you could do this in a prompt kind of outside of Excel, is just download the data that you want into a CSV file. So here I'm going to use the, the pixel one, but again, you know, you don't have to use pixel to do this. So I'm just going to save uh, the Apple stock prices into this file called, uh, you know, Apple one hour CSV. So I'll write that, that saved that to the file. Uh, and now, uh, now I'm done with this, so I can close this. And I'm going to, in order to get that data into Excel, I have to go through Power Query. Uh, so I do get data from text CSV, select this file, do import, uh, and then in here it's got this this data from the CSV file. I can say uh, load to uh, only create connection. So normally by default this would uh, insert it into a table, but we just want the connection here. So now oh, I've already got this one. Let me delete this. Uh, so now in a Using Python in Excel, I can load this data. So I could say uh, equals py. Now in here, I have to do data frame equals Excel uh, this thing. So that will get me the data frame. If I run that, uh, thinks for a little while and returns the data frame. Now what I need to do is create this candlestick chart. Uh, in this example, I use Plotly using Pixel because it's just a nice way of doing candlesticks and it's nice and interactive and, and this kind of stuff. Uh, unfortunately, in the in the Microsoft Python and Excel thing, I I don't have the choice to use Plotly. I have to use either Matplotlib or Seaborn, which is built on top of, of Matplotlib. Uh, and the code for doing that is a little bit more complicated. There is actually uh, a third party package for doing candlestick charts in Matplotlib, but again, that package isn't available using uh, using the Microsoft thing, so I have to do it this way. 
And I'm just going to copy and paste this code that I wrote earlier because it's, it's fairly involved. Um, and when I do that, again, I just wait for a few seconds for it to, uh, to do whatever it's doing. We saw before this was only a small number of rows, uh, but it does sometimes take a while. And so now I've got this image, I need to change the Python thing to XL value. Uh, it just takes a few seconds again. Uh, there we go. And then I can do click to this thing and then I've got this image. And so now if I want to resize this to compare it with the pixel version, I can just go ahead and resize it like this. Uh, and that's it. So this is kind of what it looks like using Pixel and Plotly, and also how fast it is. So if I change this to Apple, you can see, you know, it's not a problem loading the data. That's very fast. I can load a lot more data. And again, it updates very quickly. With the Microsoft One, uh, this is what I get using simple matplotlib stuff. Uh, and if I want to change anything, like if I want to change the data source of this file, I have to download the file I want into a CSV file. I have to create a new Power Query connection, and then I have to go into here and uh, update the, the Power Query connection that I'm using. And similarly, if I wanted to change any of the, uh, like the range of data that I wanted or anything like that, I have to go in and, and edit this code. So it's really kind of unfriendly for most, most Excel users. Sure, if you're you know, uh, an expert Python developer, then maybe you'll be unfazed by this. Uh, but kind of the, the whole point of Pixel, and uh, one of the main points of Pixel is to make Python toolkits accessible to Excel users. So with Pixel, that's why the focus is on writing functions, which can then be uh, you know, packaged up and distributed to, to end users, and why what you end up with is stuff that just looks like Excel functions uh, that run quickly and have access to everything with, with no issues. So uh, I hope this video was interesting. Uh, I hope it's been good to see how, how Plotly charts can be pulled into, into Excel quite easily. Uh, and gives you some ideas for maybe your own dashboards that you want to deploy to, to Excel users or, or use yourself. Uh, and hopefully it's, it's kind of cleared up how to load uh, external data via Power Query uh, into Excel and then into Python in the cloud using Microsoft's things. There's, there's lots of videos online that show it, uh, you know, show it more clearly than this, but you know, this, this shows you that it is possible and it shows you kind of what the, uh, what the results you can expect look like. All right, thanks for watching.